Suppose we had an empty box. Despite our intuition that tells us that the box is empty, this isn't really true. It's filled with air molecules, receives radiation such as visible light and heat from the surrounding environment, and it's being constantly bombarded by invisible cosmic particles. But okay, what if you completely sealed the box, sucked all the air out to create a vacuum, cooled it to the lowest possible temperature, and shielded it from any external radiation or cosmic particles? Surely the box would contain nothing, right? Well, not exactly, and to understand why, we need to look at quantum field theory. Traditionally, we're used to thinking about subatomic elementary particles as being the fundamental building blocks that make up matter and forces as we know it. However, quantum field theory suggests that our universe isn't just simply made up of particle building blocks. Instead, it theorizes that every point in our universe is instead occupied by something known as a quantum field. Not just one quantum field, but a quantum field for every elementary particle. So at everywhere in our universe, there's an electron field, a top quark field, a muon field, and so on. Each elementary particle is actually just a localized vibration in its corresponding quantum field. For example, the electron particle is actually just a localized vibration in the electron field. You can think of quantum fields as being these oceans that fill up the entire universe. When you excite the quantum field, you create ripples, these bundles of energy in the ocean. And these bundles of energy are actually the elementary particles that make up our universe. Now keeping this in mind, consider the ideal empty box that we created earlier. Even though the box is in a complete vacuum state, the space inside the box is occupied by quantum fields. But it turns out that these quantum fields don't just sit still within the empty box. A version of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, one of the foundational stones of quantum mechanics, states that we cannot perfectly define the time and energy of a particle at the same time. The more certain we are about the time interval of a particle's behavior, the less certain we become of the energy state of the particle during that time interval. If we increase the certainty for time to an extremely short interval, the uncertainty for energy rises. So for very short time intervals, the quantum field becomes a blur of many uncertain energy states. And within these very short time intervals, it's possible for the quantum field to actually spontaneously acquire enough energy to create a particle-antiparticle pair that quickly disappear as they annihilate each other. These particles popping in and out of existence are called virtual particles, and it turns out that empty space is the bubbling soup of these virtual particles, constantly being created and destroyed, kind of like white noise. They even have measurable effects in our world. Imagine putting two uncharged conducting plates in our box of nothingness. Normally the empty box would be teeming with virtual particles that pop in and out of existence. But once we add these two plates, we eliminate some of the virtual particles with wavelengths that cannot exist within the space between the two plates. And because there are more virtual particles pushing on the plates around the two plates than in between, an overall pressure is exerted on the plates, causing them to move toward each other, a phenomenon known as the Casimir effect. So I ask you this question again, can we really call this bubbling soup of virtual particles as being truly empty?